Hi, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about introduction to organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is one of the major branches of chemistry. It includes the study of all biological molecules, from simple sugar to complex nucleic acid, all fossil fuels, including oil, coal, and natural gas, nearly all synthetic materials such as nylon, uh, lycra, etc., and many domestic and industrial products such as paints, detergent, and refrigerants. In this chapter, we will start with a study of the classification of organic compounds and learn how its compound can be described specifically by name and formula. The presence of the specific functional groups in organic molecules brings order to uh, the almost overwhelming diversity of structures and enables organic chemists to predict and explain characteristic reactions and mechanism. The functional, functional groups that we will learn in this chapter will be alkenes, alkenes, halogenalkenes, alcohols, including primary, secondary, and tertiary, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acid, esters, amines, and nitriles. So what defines the uh, an organic compound? Simply, it is a compound that contains carbon. <coughs> And in nearly all cases, also contains hydrogen in a covalently bonded structures. Other elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, and sulfur are often also present, but it is carbon that is the key. Amazingly, the single element is able to form a larger number of compounds than all the other elements put together. This is because carbon forms four strong covalent bonds with other carbon atoms or with other elements, especially hydrogens. Okay, you can see that carbon have a special ability to link uh, to itself to form chains and rings. And this process known as catenation. Yeah, is one of the main reasons for the vast numbers of organic compounds that exist. Okay, we will start from, uh, we will start to discuss about formulas for organic compounds. There are several ways uh, to represent uh, the organic compounds with this empirical formula, molecular, structural. Uh, for the structural, there will be three types of structural formula, displayed, condensed, and then the 3D. And then the fourth is skeletal formula. We will start from the, from empirical formula. Empirical formula is the simplest ratio of the different types of atoms present in the molecule. Okay, this shows about the simplest ratio. If we have ethane with molecular formula C to H6, so what is the empirical formula for this? Simply, you just divide this by two. So CH3. CH3 is the, is the uh, empirical formula for C to H6. So once again, and because formula is the simplest ratio of different types of atoms present in the molecule. Okay, you should uh, understand about the definition. The second is molecular formula. Molecular formula is the actual numbers of each type of atom in a molecule. It can be deduced if both the empirical formula and the relative molecular mass are known. So look at this example. What is the molecular formula for a compound with relative molecular mass 30 and the empirical formula CH3? Okay, the empirical formula times N equals to its MR. You should find the value of N. After you get the value of N, then you will get the molecular formula. So let's see your predictable to find the AR of carbon and hydrogen. AR of carbon is 12, and we have a 1C here, so 12, plus 3 times AR of each, which is 1, in a bracket, times N equals to MR, which is, in this case, 30. So 15N equals to 30, so N equals to 2. Because N equals to 2, then we will get the molecular formula c 2 x 6 So this is uh, how to find the molecular formula. <clears throat> the third type of formula called as structural. Structural formula is the representation of molecule showing how the atoms are bonded to each other. 
Okay, the first structure formula called as display formula. In this display formula, every bond will be shown. Yeah, this formula showing every bond and atom, usually 90 and 180 angles, are used to show the bonds. Okay. So, uh, for example, if we want to uh, make the display formula for C to F six, okay, you should open all all bonds, yeah, all bonds inside this molecule. So this is the display formula for ethene. How about ethanol, CS three, CS two OH? Then you should open all bonds, yeah, inside this molecule, CS three. CS2, OH. Please uh, don't forget uh, that carbon always has four hands, uh, while oxygen has two hands, while hydrogen always only one hand. Okay, so uh, this formula called as display. Yeah, display. So all bonds should be displayed, should be shown. Okay, the second structural formula called as condensed structural formula. So let's say uh, I want to simplify this uh, formula. Okay, we can omit bonds that can be assumed together. So, for example, we can condense these groups into CS3. Okay, so the condensed structural formula for uh, situations will be CS3. Don't forget how you write the CS3, H3C. Bond CS3. Okay, because carbon connected to C, uh, carbon. But if you write like this, CS3, CS3, this is a uh, seem that carbon uh, bonded to hydrogen, which is false, right? So <clears throat> this is wrong and this is right. Okay, C connected to the C. C, 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 C. Please remember. And how about if I want to make the condensed structure formula for CS3, CS2OH. Yeah, we just combine this together, CS3, and this is CS2, and then this is OH, okay? So this is called as condensed structure formula. Often omit bonds where they can be assumed and group atoms together, yeah? <clears throat> the third type of uh, structure formula called as 3D formula, three-dimension formula. Okay, in this formula, the relative position of atoms and groups around carbon should be shown in three dimensions. Okay, so we should uh, understand about how to draw the three dimension in two dimension because we draw it the paper, right? On the paper. So a uh, paper is two dimension, but you should draw a three dimension. So uh, it is very important for us to understand that all four bonds in carbon should be displayed with different uh different sign yeah you can see that the bond coming out of the pitch is shown as a solid enlarging wedge so should be like this okay that bond coming out of the pitch is shown as solid enlarging wedge uh, enlarging okay so for example you if you want to draw methane yeah cs4 a bond sticking behind the page is shown as a dot line, okay, a dot line or dashed line, okay. Uh, so I will change this to this from small to larger, okay. So this is H, the another H. is shown as a dot line or dash. A bond in the plan on a paper is a solid line, yeah. So this is uh, a solid line, yeah. Uh, that means this bond. On the plan of the paper, so this is, so this is how we draw methane yeah, in three dimension form. Now it's your turn to draw ethene. Oh, sorry, you should draw ethene first because at uh, in ethene there there will be a double bond. Yeah, so I will show this letter. Please uh, try to make ethene C two F six in three D formula. <coughs> So how you do this? Okay, let's see 18 here. 
it is 18. Because you want uh, to build a 3D formula, you just can make a uh, for 1C, yeah, 1C. So let's say I want to pick this C. I want to show the 3D formula for this C. So we, we assume this as CS3, yeah. So this is how we draw the 18 molecule. Okay, for example, this is CS3. This is H, this is H, this is H. Okay, so please remember this is a tetrahedral structure, yeah. Okay, how about uh, if I want to draw a tree formula for ethanol? Look here. Okay, this is ethanol. Okay, the most important is just pick one carbon that you want to show in 3D form. Let's say I want to pick this, yeah, this carbon, to show this carbon. So I will make uh, the 3D formula for ethanol now. C. Okay, don't forget for hands. Okay, the solid enlarging weights. And then the dot, and then the solid line. Okay, look here. This carbon connected to H, H, OH, and CS3, right? So I will put CS3 here. I will put OH here. And then this is H, this is H. Okay. No matter uh, uh you 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 can put uh, the groups uh, at uh, any bonds, okay? For example, if you want to put the CS3 here, it's okay. Okay, if you want to put CS3 here, and then this H is okay. Okay, you can put anywhere. Okay, so this is uh, we call as 3D uh, formula. <coughs> okay, let's see uh, how we draw 18. 18 is C2S4. C2S4 has the display formula like this. So how about uh, we uh, show in the 3D or display formula? Okay, for 18, please be careful since this is an SP2 carbon. Okay. There we there will be the three D formula like this, okay? H H okay? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Although this is a planar, yeah, it has a planar structure, but we want to show that this hydrogen is, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go to the go to the page, yeah, go to the page, behind the page, and uh, this uh, go out, yeah, uh, come uh, come and close to us as the observer, okay, and then this uh, go go away, yeah, uh, from us as the observer. Okay, so this is uh, how we displayed uh, a 3D formula for some organic compounds. <coughs> okay, so far we already learned about uh, empirical formula, molecular formula, and then uh, structural formula. Structural formula can be uh, the display formula, okay, and then condensed formula, and also the 3D formula. So for example, if we have a pin, my empirical is CS3, molecular C2S6. This is the display formula. This is the condensed. And just now you already learned about how to draw the, the 3D formula. Ethanoic acid, CS3, COOH. So C2H4O2 for the molecular. Simplify this by divide by 2. So CS2O is the empirical formula. Uh, the, the display formula CS3, if you open all bonds, C double bond O, OH, yeah, like this. This should be one, one more line like this. One more line and then H. Condense CS3, COOH. Okay, understand? Okay, the last one is a skeletal formula. It is a simplified version of the display formula. <coughs> 
<coughs> it has all the all the symbol for carbon and hydrogen atoms removed, as well as the carbon to hydrogen bonds. Okay, let's say we have ethene once again, and I'd like to make this Galata formula. It will be like this, only one line like this. How about propene, CS3, CS2, CS3? Propane would be like this. How about butene? CS3, CS2, CS2, CS3. Okay. All the symbols for carbon and hydrogen atoms remove, as well as the carbon to hydrogen bonds. Okay. The carbon to carbon bonds are left in place. So this show you about carbon carbon bond actually. Carbon, 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 carbon. Only carbon, carbon bonds. Okay, how if I want to make the this uh, skeletal formula for ethanol? How to make this? Do you want to try? Okay, we'll be like this. Okay, this is CS2 and this is CS3. Yeah, CS3, CS2, OH. How about, for example, I have CS3, COOH. How to make the skeletal formula? <coughs> it will be like this. Okay. Okay, now I have uh, this practice question. Hexane, could you may, uh, please make the display formula, structural, skeletal, and molecular formula for this compound? Please pause this video while you're working and co please continue uh, to, uh, yeah, to hear and to see about the explanation of the answer. Okay, please pause now. Okay, everyone, please uh, uh, let's uh, discuss about the answer. You know, the hexane uh, is the alkene that consists of 6C. Okay, 6C. So you can make a display formula consists of six carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then display formula, that means you should show all bonds inside this molecule. So we'll be like this. Okay, so the molecular formula is C6H14, yeah? If you count all H, here is C6H14. Okay, let's make the structural formula. Once again, uh, we can make the condensed structural formula here. We can uh, assume this together. So CS3. And then we have CS2, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1, 2, this is H. Three, four, four CS two. So we can shoot. Uh, we can make a uh, uh, bracket. Yeah, CS two four times, and then the last is CS three again here. Yeah, will we'll, we'll be like this. Okay. So S three C in the bracket CS two four times CS three, or if you have Time, yeah, you can uh, also write like this. Okay. CS3, CS2, four times, and then CS3. Okay, now we want to make the skeletal formula for this. Skeletal, that means you should omit all uh, hard CH bonds. Okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the skeletal formula. For hexane. Okay, understand? Now I have this practice question. Please try again.
Okay, let's discuss the answer. Give the molecular formula of compound G. This is G. Molecular formula. So that means you should count all C's and H inside this molecule. So CH3, CH2, CH2, two times CH3. So there are four C's and then 10 H. Yeah, so C4, H10. Give the empirical formula for compound H. Empirical formula for compound H. Okay, before we can decide uh, the empirical formula for H, we should find the molecule first, the molecular formula first. So could you count all C's here? Okay, there are eight. C, eight, H. How many H? Three times three, nine. Nine plus two, 11. Plus one, 12. Plus three, 15. Plus three again, 15. So uh, 18. So uh, C, C8 is 18. And then empirical, you should divide this by, by two, right? The simplest. So C4, it's nine. Okay, the empirical formula for H is C4, it's nine. Okay, the next question, draw the scatter formula for compound G. Okay, now we should draw the scatter formula for compound G. Okay, how many C's that we have? One, two, three, four, five, five, right? Okay, and then after you uh, count the number of C's, Please find the longest chain that contains all each, since this is the alcohol, right? So you should find uh, the longest chain contains uh, uh, that attached to all each. So I think this is the, okay, this is the longest chain, right? Consists of, consists of four C, four C's, okay? One, two, three, four. Okay, how about this? Okay, this is called as range. Yeah, this is called as range. This is longest chain. Okay, this is longest chain. And this is range. Yeah, like tree, this is the branch of the tree. Okay, so the longest chain consists of how many C's? Consists of four C's, yeah? One, two, three, four, okay? Four C's. At the second carbon, you can see that oh, it's group attached to it. Okay, let's see. This is let's say this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. At the second carbon, uh, there is oh, it's group. So you can make uh, the line and show the OS group attached to the carbon to the second carbon. Okay, and then you can see as well that the branch attached to the carbon number three, right? So carbon number three, at carbon number three, there, there is a metal group, CS3. So you can draw a line like this, okay? Only one line. Then I remove the number. Okay, understand? So this is how we make uh, the scatter formula for G. One, two, three, four, and then this is the bridge. Okay, the same question. How if I want to make the skeletal formula for each? Okay, let's try to do this. C is three, three times C. Okay, so I will open this. I will open, uh, this is H, yeah. C is three, three times C. C is three, C is three, C is three. So it will be like this. And then this connected to C is two, okay. And then again connected to the C H and then C S3 two times. C S3, C S3. Why I can make uh why I can build this structure? Because I uh, always remember that C has four hands. So it is impossible for me to write like this, right? C S3 three times C, right? This impossible, right? Since uh this carbon will have how many hands? Three. Four, five. You'll have five hands. Impossible. And also these five hands. 
possible. So uh, CS3 three times C would be not like this. Will be not CS3, CS3, CS3. That's wrong. Okay. But will be like this. C surrounded by three CS3. So CS3 three times C. Okay, this is how uh, I open uh, compound H. Yeah. Okay, now uh, I like to count the longest chain. Which, which one is the longest chain? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So I can choose this as the longest chain. Okay. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have how many branches? There are three branches here. How to make the skeletal formula then? I make the longest chain first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I make with, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. At the second, there are two C's. So I will draw like this and then this. Okay. And then at the fourth carbon, one, two, three, four. There will be one CS3 as well. Okay. So this how we make the skeletal formula for each. Okay, is it clear? Okay, I hope, yeah, it is clear. Okay, next question. Croton aldehyde occurs in soybean oils. Draw the skeletal formula for croton aldehyde. Okay, please pause this video while you're working uh, to, to, to answer this question. Okay, let's see how do you make this. Okay, this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. So I will write like this first. One, two, three, four, okay. At the first carbon, you can see that it attaches to HO. Can it be like this, CHO? I mean, can it be CHO? This is impossible, right? Why? Since hydrogen cannot connect it to, to another groups, since hydrogen only has one hand. So CSO here would be not like this. This is wrong. So how we make the correct CSO bond? <clears throat> Don't forget this C, yeah, the first C. Only connect with the CH, the second C, and one oxygen and one hydrogen. So CSO for carbon number one will be like this C double bond OH. Okay. Once again, CSO here, if you open this, will be like this C double bond OH. Okay. So oxygen has two hands. Carbon has four hands, while hydrogen only has one hand. Okay, now uh, we want to make the COH bond at the first C here. This is one, two, three, four, right? At the first C, there will be an aldehyde group, COH. So this is how I make the scatter formula for this. This is COH. Okay, and then you can see that double bonds exist at between carbon number two and carbon number three. So just draw one more line, yeah, to show the double bond here. And then I will erase the number, okay? The number is just, uh, uh, just used to help me, yeah, to identify with C, connected to with C. Okay, understand how to make this gather formula? Okay, since practice makes perfect, uh, I give you many uh, questions yeah, in this uh, video. So please try to do this now.
Oke, okay, everyone. MB curve formula CS2O. MR60, was the molecular formula. So this is the molecular formula for this compound, okay? Next. Okay, let's discuss the answer. According to chapter one about stoichiometry, you already know about how to calculate the Mbaker formula from the mole ratio, right? Mbaker formula can be uh, calculated using the mole ratio. So how to uh, get the Mbaker formula for this hydrocarbon? If it is contained this gram of carbon and this gram of hydrogen, so you should find the moles of C compared with the moles of hydrogen. You know that moles is mass over AR. So for carbon, this divide with 12. For hydrogen, this divide by one. Use your calculator. Okay, and then simplify by divide with the smallest number, which is 0 0.06. So this gives you one over three ratio. Right? So the Mbaker formula is CH3. MR30. So it is C2X6. Okay, Sim simple, right? Next question. Just remember, we would like to make the condensed formula. So this is CS3, right? So CS3, and then this is CS2. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six CS2, so I can use in a bracket CS2, six. And then the last is CS3 again. Okay, so this is the condensed structure formula for this molecule. <coughs> Next question. Okay, this is a cyclic compound. Okay, so what's the answer? I will start from this. Okay, this is CS2. And then this is to connected to, to another CS2. Look how I make the line, okay, to show that the C connected to the C, not to the H. And then this already, uh, this connected to CS2, 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 okay. So like this, CS2, CS2, CS2. Okay, so this is how we draw the condensed structure formula for this molecule. <clears throat> So we are done with formula, everyone. Uh, don't forget that we already have empirical formula, molecular formula, structural formula, skeletal formula. Now we'd like to learn about identify functional groups of uh, yeah organic compounds and learn how to give names yeah for yeah its homology series. Okay, uh, the rules to give name for Organic compounds is come from IUPAC, IUPAC rules, yeah. IUPAC is uh, for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So this is the, uh, yeah, this is the non-governmental organization, yeah, that uh, have the main job to, uh, for its, uh, for the system of nomenclature, okay. And it is used, uh, 
uh, for every already compounds and yeah this is in every countries will be have the same name for this compound so let's say uh, if i have ethanol uh, i will use ethanol in indonesia and how if i said ethanol in in us for example yeah et still ethanol because ethanol is the uh, the name uh, and then uh, that's according to the iopec rules okay so uh, please be careful uh, we, uh, we'd like to learn about how to give name using IOPEC rules. Okay, since uh, there are many organic compounds, we would like to classify them according to its functional groups. Okay, uh, we will start from alkene, alkene, alkyne. Okay, alkene, uh, all saturated. Alkenes has double bond, so unsaturated. While alkyne has triple bonds, so unsaturated as well. Okay, so the first, yeah, the first functional group is hydrocarbon, alkene, alkene, and then alkyne. Yeah, alkene has the general formula CnH2n plus 2, alkene CnH2n, while alkyne CnH2n minus 2. Yeah, alkyne based known for its triple one uh, structure. After that, we will learn about arenes. Arenes has a benzene ring here. Yeah, one example of arenes is uh, benzene group. <coughs> okay, for uh, halogen alkene, this is the third functional group. Is Cn S to N minus uh, plus one X. So you can see that the general formula for halogen alkene is derived from alkene. Alkene lost one hydrogen, right? You know that alkene we Cn S to N plus two. So since halogen alkene Cn S to N plus two. A plus one, I mean, that means uh, halogen alkene derived from alkene with lost one hydrogen, right? So, for example, uh, we have CS4 for alkene. For halogen alkene, is CS3Cl here. So, one hydrogen from methane here has been substituted with Cl. So, halogen alkene. Yeah, halogen, that means the group seven elements. This is FCLBRI. And then uh, the another functional group is alcohol. Alcohol uh, has the general formula CnH2n plus 1 OH. So uh, CS4, one hydrogen that has been replaced with OH group. Like this. Okay. Every compound that has OH group called as alcohol group. Okay, the next functional group is aldehyde, C double one OH, ketone, C R C double one O R. <clears throat> okay, this is R, C double one O, this is R. Yeah. So uh, C double one O connected to two another C's. Carboxylic acid, C double one O OH, ester, C double one O O R. Yeah, so R, C, double one, O, O, R. This is ester. Amine, R, N, S, 2. Nitrile, R, C, triple one, N. <coughs> I'd like you to, to read this first. <clears throat> Later on, we, we should uh, understand about how to naming uh, these uh, compounds, yeah? Okay, you already understand about uh, functional groups, yeah? From alkene, alkene, alkynes, arenes, halogenol, alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, and amine, also nitrile. Okay, I like it to memorize this, yeah, because uh, this is the basic. So, if you already understand about this, uh, I want to show you about the more, yeah, 
the more completable. Alkene, alkene, alkyne, alcohol. You can see that we or we also have one more functional group here called as ether. Ether is R O R. Yeah, aldehyde. Aldehyde. You already learned about this, and ketone also. So uh, the new here is ether. So two C's uh, connected to oxygen. Esther, and one more <coughs> is amide. Look here. Amide is RNS2, while amide is C double bond O N. Look here. Okay. So amide and amide is uh, two different groups, functional group, yeah. Amide is RNS2 without CO, while amide has C double bond O, C O N S2. This is amide. So alkene, alkene, alkyne, alcohol, ether, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, amide, amide, nitrile, erin. So 13 functional groups. Okay, now uh, let's practice to identify a functional groups present in the compound. Okay, please answer this. Please pause this video. Okay, are you done? If you are done, uh, you can uh, check your answer with mine. Identify the functional group in the following compound. Okay, we have C double one O and S two, so this is MI. Identify the functional group in the following compound. Look here, I have COH. What is this? This is aldehyde. Okay, this is bromide. And this is aromatic, right? Benzene, erin, aromatic. So the answer is B. Bromide, aldehyde, aromatic. What is? R C O R. So this is ketone. We have amine, R N S two, and aromatic. So C is the answer. This very simple. Number one. So this is alkene. Okay. Next question. Please find the functional groups inside this molecule, yeah? Okay, let's start to discuss this. CSO, this is aldehyde. I already show you that this is C double one O is right? Okay, that's same, aldehyde. OME, that means this is O connected to CH3. CH3 is methyl, so O CH3 methyl. So this is ether. Yeah, R O R. And this is alcohol, alcohol. And this is erin. Okay, let's see the second compound, NH2. So this is amine. How this? N, R. So this is amine. Okay, but tertiary amine. Later on, you will learn about this tertiary amine. And then you have this. What is this? R, C, O, O, R. Okay, this is ester. 
Yeah. Okay, the last one. Oh, we also have uh, Erin here, yeah, Erin, or aromatic. Okay, this is Erin. We have Alkin here. Yeah, and then Nitro, yeah, Nitro. Nitro is not specific uh, in this functional group, yeah, so yeah, this is just Nitro. Okay, so uh, that's how we identify the functional groups inside uh, this example. Next question again, identify again the functional group. Okay, this time you should be faster. So this is alcohol. Erin. Am I? Iton, Al, Alkin. Am I? Erin. Carboxylic acid. Am I? Keton, Alkin, Alkin, Alkyne, this is C triple one C, yeah, and then this is, this is we call as acyl halide, but uh, you will see this at a level, yeah, not now. But since it is a pure, yeah, uh, I just want you to know that this is uh, we call as acyl halide. Okay, this will be in your uh, we will learn this in uh, your A level time. Okay, so that's all about functional groups. Uh, now we want to see about the nomenclature, yeah, of the of organic compounds using IOPEC system. Okay, first of all, you should identify the longest straight chain of carbon atoms. Yeah, a, a longest straight chain, the longest chain. If uh, it is uh, consists of 1C only, so the name would be methane, 2 ethane, 3 propane. I hope you still remember about the homology series of alkene. So, could you continue? After pentane, 5, hexane, 6, how about 7? It is heptane, 8. Octane, 9, nonine, 10, decane. Okay, so uh, if you find the longest chain consists of, let's say, 5 Cs, so the longest chain will have the name pentane. Okay. Second, uh, you should identify the functional group because the functional group will be uh, determine the name. Yeah, you can see from this, uh, from this table, Okay, you can see that the functional group, if uh, it is a deeper functional group, then the name will be deeper as well. So for example, carboxylic acid has the name enoic acid, while ketone has enone. Yeah, the name enone. So it is uh, very important for us to identify the functional group. Okay. Okay, number three, identify the side chains or substituent groups. Yeah, the side chains could be uh, an alkyl group such as methyl, ethyl, propyl, etc. Or it could be halogens, and the name for halogen will become halogeno later on. Chloro, chlorobromoiodide. And if it is amine, yeah, the prefix in IUPAC name will be will be changed to amino. Okay, we will uh, learn about this one by one later on. Okay, this is the IUPAC naming priority list. <coughs> so let's say uh, later on I have compound. Consists two double bonds for, uh, consists two functional groups, I mean. 
yeah. So the first functional group is acid, carboxylic acid. The second one is alkene. How to give name? Okay. Uh, if you have a this compound, please see the priority. The priority would be carboxylic acid. This is the highest priority. So this would be the carbon number one, this carbon number two, this carbon number three. You can see that alkene here. Yeah, less priority compared to carboxylic acid. Okay. Later we will uh, learn about uh, the examples of how to give name if there are two or more functional groups inside the molecule. Okay. I'd like you to uh, take notes regarding this. So carboxylic acid is the, the highest priority. Then esters, amide, okay, uh, aldehyde, ketone. If you're aware, all of this has C double bond O. Okay, carboxylic acid COO is ester COOR, amide COOH, aldehyde COOH, ketone COR, right? All has C double bond O, carbonyl. And uh, the next is alcohol, amine, alkene, alkyl halide, and then alkene. Okay, since there are 13 functional groups that we should uh, memorize, that we should learn about how to give name, we will start from the simplest one, yeah, which is alkene. Alkene is the simplest organic compound since it has only C and H. Okay, I'd like you to take notes yeah, regarding the, the name of the alkyl group. What is alkyl? Alkyl actually is alkene. Yeah, alkene that lost one hydrogen. So let's say if I have methane, <coughs> methane is CS4, the simplest alkene. If one hydrogen lost, yeah, the structure becomes CS3 and then one free hand like this. Yeah, this free hand can be connected to other, another group. This uh, structure will be changed from methane. The name will be changed from methane to methyl. So once again, alkyl group uh, are alkenes, yeah, alkenes that lose one hydrogen atom. So CS3 for ethyl, this is comes from ethene, C2S6. Since it lost one hydrogen, it becomes C2S5 freehand. Okay, for propyl, there are two arrangements for propyl, CS2, CS, CS3, CS2, CS2. <clears throat> this region like this called as propyl, but it, it is also can become isopropyl. In this case, isopropyl. Yeah, kins, yeah, the structure will be kins from CS3, CS2, CS2 becomes CS3, CS, CS3. Yeah, so uh, the carbon that connect to the, to the longest chain later on will be CH not CS2. Okay, let's say we have this CS3, CS2, CS2, this connected to the longest chain. This is propyl, while this is isopropyl. Okay, the C that connect to the longest chain connected to, to another CS3. Yeah, this is isopropyl. Isopropyl, okay? Do you understand? Okay, I hope so. Let's continue with butyl. Butyl, CS3, CS2, CS2, CS2. This is butyl. So how to make the isobutyl? Yeah, once again, C connected to the two CS3. Give one more CS2. Yeah, this is the longest chain. This is isobutyl. If you move or shift this CS3 to here, Okay, then the structure will become this. This is secunder butyl, yeah? Why it is called secunder? Since the C that connect to the longest chain bonded to two another C. Yeah, so that's why it is called secunder butyl. Yeah, for Cs, but uh, this CH connected to two analysis. How about tertiary butyl? Tertiary 
that means uh, yeah would be like this see that connect to the longest chain connected to three and let's see one two three so that's why it is called tertiary butyl ter butyl okay uh these are the best known alkyl groups yeah in uh, alkene alkene so methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl, butyl, isobutyl, second butyl, tertiary butyl. Okay, next we want to learn about IUPAC rules for alkene nomenclature. First, find and name the longest continuous carbon chain. Okay, let's say, uh, wait, I want to use the another color. Okay, so let's say I have this compound. What the name for this? You just count the number of cis, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is octane. Yeah, you just complete with H later on. So this is octane. Sin lowest chain consists of eight C. But now let's see how if I add Okay, which one now is the longest chain? Let's say I have this. Okay, you can see uh, several possibility, right? If I choose this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I got seven, seven C's. Okay, but if I choose this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight. So which one is the longest skin? Yeah, the green one, yeah, this. Okay. It can be also uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, still seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, six, yeah, less. So the the longest skin in this case is uh, consists of six, uh, eight C's. Okay. okay, so first, please identify uh, the longest continuous carbon chain. This is very important. Okay, after you are uh, able to identify, go to the second step. Identify the name groups attached to this chain. Okay, we have uh, several uh, braids here. So we use the pink color. We have this, this, and this, right? Yeah, that's the means of number two. Identify and name groups attached to this key. Okay, since uh, I will use the simple one, yeah, I will erase this first. Okay, so I have only one cis, uh, one branch. I mean, okay. Once again, this is the longest chain. This is the branch. Okay, go to the the third step. Number the chain consecutively starting at the end nearest to a substituent group. So that means the branch should attest to the C that has the smallest number. I mean, there are two ways to give number for this longest chain. I could start from this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or I can start from I can, start, I can start from below, yeah, go up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are two ways how to numbering the, the longest chain from left or from below. The most important, you should understand which one that you should choose, the orange or the purple. Okay, how to decide? Let's see uh, number three again. Number the chain consecutively starting at the, at the end nearest a substituent group. <clears throat> that means if you use uh, the orange one, which is from the left, the brains will attest to the carbon number, carbon number six, right? This C, the pink one here, connected to the C number six, C number six. 
But if you choose two numbering from below, one, two, three, this is connected to the C number three. So it's one that you will choose. The answer is the purple. Yeah, because the lowest number. Yeah, you should give number so the brains attest to the lowest number of C. So I will erase the, the orange since this is wrong. Okay. Okay, let's let's see again. <coughs> Okay, I have this example. This is the longest gene. So this is brains, this is brains. I should give number for the longest gene. From left or from right. The pink circle is the brains. The brains should attest to the carbon with the lowest number. So if I choose the left, I choose to the numbering from left. One, two, three. The brains attest to the carbon number two and number carbon number three, right? But if I choose to numbering from right, one, two, three, four, five, six, the brains uh, attest to carbon number five and six. And this is larger compared than two, three, right? So this wrong if you numbering from right. This is wrong. Okay. So you should numbering from, from left. Because two three is smaller compared than six, uh, five six. Okay, that's how you uh, numbering the longest skin. Okay, number four, design design the location of each substituent group by an appropriate number and name. Okay, number four. Okay, you can see that one CS three attest to the carbon number three, right? This is CS three actually. CS three is methyl, right? This is methyl. Methyl group attest to carbon number three. So the name would be three methyl. Okay. Assemble the name listing groups in alphabetical order using the full name and the prefixes di, tri, tetra, etc. Because we just have one alpha group. Uh, it is uh, no need to use di, tri, tetra, etc. Okay. So you just skip it. So the name for this compound will be 3 methyl. And then the, the name of for the longest chain is 8 carbon, so 3 methyl octane. Okay, understand? How? How if I add one more C here? One more CS3. Okay, so now we have two branches at carbon number 3. And carbon number six, right? So now the name will becomes three six three comma six. Since we have two metal group, the name would be dimethyl. Okay, this is what means that uh, the prefixes di, tri, tetra used to design several groups at the same kind. Okay, so three six dimethyl octane. How if I have one more CS3 here. The name becomes 3,3,6 trimethyl octane. Look here, how I give name. 336, because there are two branches at carbon number three. 336, since it is the same, they are trimethyl octane. Okay, understand? Now I'd like to introduce you a different alpha group. Okay, so let's say I still have methyl here. And I will give this CS2, CS3. Okay. Okay, uh, you can see that now I have a new alkyl group at the second carbon. So what's the name then? You can see that at the second carbon, there are alkyl group consists of two Cs, CS2, CS3. So actually this is ethyl. Yeah, 
This is C2S5 actually, C2S5 freehand. Okay, this is ethyl and this is methyl. Okay, alphabetically order, E comes first before M, right? Ethyl comes before M. So to give name for this compound, yeah, I should uh, determine uh, the ethyl group first at the second C. Two strip ethyl. Don't forget number with word. Yeah, you should give a uh, dash here. Yeah, two ethyl. Okay, and then uh, we have methyl group at the third carbon. Okay, two ethyl, three methyl. And then long as in, thin. Can I say? Two ethyl, uh, three methyl, thin. Okay, once again, since uh, it is the uh, comes from E compared to M, yeah, to ethyl to methyl. Okay, now let's see if I have one more C here. Uh, what's the name would be now? The name would be to ethyl strip two comma three. Dimethyl octane. Okay, do you understand? Since we have methyl group uh, at the second and then the third carbon, 2, 3 dimethyl. Clear? Yeah, I think it's clear. Yeah? So let's say I have one more C. Uh, I, I have one more brains at the fourth C. CS2, CS3. What the name, what the name would be now? Okay, the name would be 2,4-diethyl, 2,3-dimethyl octane. Okay, so uh, the prefix uh, di, tri, etc. Yeah, will not uh, change the alphabetical order. Yeah, so uh, you still need to uh, look the E and the M, not the di or tri or uh, tetra, etc. Okay. Okay, let's uh see one more patient. Okay, what's the name for this compound? Okay, first we should find the longest skin, right? This one, the longest skin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, please be careful that this is not branch. Branch never at the first C. Yeah, once again, branch never at the first or to, uh, at the last C. Never. Because it will change to the longest skin. Yeah, it will become the part of the longest skin. So I think this is the longest skin, yeah. Okay, please find the longest chain, which uh, you will get more branches, yeah. So let's say if you have this, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, let's say like this. Okay. Uh, you should choose this as the longest chain, yeah? Okay, let's continue to give name for this. Uh, first, you should identify the branches. So I have this, this, and this. Numbering the longest chain, so the brains uh, have the lowest number. From left or from below. If I start from left, one, two, three, the brain start from number three, right? From below, one, two, three, three as well, okay? So I can uh, either numbering from left, left to right, or from below to, to this, okay? Since uh, the number will be same, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, the brains uh, at the third and fifth carbon. Yeah, for methyl and at the fourth there is ethyl group. So the name would be for ethyl three three what me three five dimethyl seven cis longosine so heptene. Okay, for ethyl three five dimethyl heptene. Okay, now let's practice. Okay, draw the display formula. Once again, display formula, uh, you should show all bonds. I will start from butane, the longest skin first. One, two, three, four. Okay, show all bonds. At the second carbon, let's say uh, this is the second carbon. There is one metal group, right? Two methyl. So I will change this to methyl C. And then complete with H. Okay, so this is E. How about B? Heptane. Seven C's. At the third, there is ethyl. And also at the fifth, there is ethyl group. Complete with H, right? Okay, for C, octane. At number two, number four, and number six, methyl group, C, C, C. Okay, complete with H, yeah, all complete with H. Two methyl propane, how to make the structural formula? Okay, two methyl propane, three cis, and the carbon number two, there is one methyl. Okay, so CS3, CH, CS3, CS3. Pentane, one, two, three, four, five. At carbon number three, ethyl, and then complete with hydrogen. This is H2, this should be H2, and this should be CH. Heptane. Seven cis. Number four, photo group. Eh, number four. This number four, right? Propyl. C, C, C. Okay. Just complete this. CS3, CS2, CS2. C8, CS2, CS2, CS3, CS2, CS2, CS3. Okay. What is the name for the following hydro hydrocarbon? First, find the longest skin, this one. If number, I will choose from left, right, since the brains uh, have the lowest number. This is ethyl. This is methyl. Alphabetical order. So, three ethyl. And then three methyl. Longest chain, seven cis, ethyl. Yeah, three ethyl, three metal heptane. Okay, uh, next, uh, I'd like you to 
try to open the this link. Okay, sciencegeek.net. Uh, Just click this. Okay, you can see that there are several uh, questions yeah, regarding our kingdom nomenclature. Okay, you can show all the questions or show questions one by one. Okay, there are how many? Yeah, there are 30, 30 questions here. Yeah, you can uh, try to solve this problem. Yeah, I will give you one example. Okay, first uh, I'd like to find the longest chain, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I choose this, I got seven. How about the other way? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven as well. Okay, if I choose uh, the first one here, how many brains that that I will get? I will get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I will have five ranges. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then the number will be at the two, three. There will be a fill at two, three, four. Yeah, I will give number from this. Okay, and then this is ethyl. And then at the third carbon, there will be methyl. And then at the fourth carbon, there will be propyl. If I choose this as the longest chain, okay? Let's see another way. Okay, I can also choose this as the longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same seven, but now, What's the braces that I have? Okay. Uh, for this, I will give number from one, two, one, two, three, four. So still here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I get two, three, four at deal as well. Three met deal. And then four propyl. So exactly same, right? So I can choose uh, either from the first direction or uh, through the second direction. Okay, let's see if we have another ways to calculate the longest chain. How if this, like this? Is it longer? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now I get eight if I choose this. So the first two will be wrong because seven and seven, right? So I will erase this. Eight is longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is there any other possibilities? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So same eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So eight, I think, is the longest key. Okay. Uh, so now let's see the ranges. This, 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 and this. Okay. Now give number for the longest chain. I will should uh, uh, I should start from below. Yeah, I should start from here because brains uh, should attest to the lowest C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I got uh, three, four. Then methyl, right? And then four five, then ethyl, and then five propyl. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, let's uh, erase in order, alphabetical order. So four five then ethyl, three four then methyl. Five propyl, the longest chain, the longest chain eight, so octane. Okay, I don't know the answer yet. Okay, now let's check uh, whether this is correct or not. 
but if it is not correct, let's uh, try to find why uh, we did wrong, okay? So, for five, diethyl, three, four, dimethyl, and then five, propyl, octin. Check. Correct, your score is 100%. Yeah, so this is how uh, we answer this question. Okay, this is, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, quite challenging question. So uh, I suggest you to try yeah, to answer this. Yeah, and look uh, what's your score later on. Okay, once again, the website is sciencegeek.net slash epichemistry slash epicator slash alkins dot stm okay this the link okay we are done with alkin uh, now let's see about the second functional group is alkin okay the IOPEC rules for alkins and cycloalkin nomenclature is first the end suffix ending indicates an alkin so uh, if you just now learn about alkene, octane, heptane, decane, blah, blah, blah. Later on, you should uh, convert this to in. So heptane changes to heptane, hexane changes to hexane, yeah? E and E. Okay, that's the first thing that you should understand. Okay, number two. The longest chain chosen by, uh, for the root name must include both carbon atoms of the double bond. So let's say if I have this. Okay, uh, let's say I have, okay, let's say I have this. There are two ways uh, of how uh, I determine the longest chain. I can choose this as the longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? It's this. But in this first way, we cannot see that the double bond include in the longest chain. So that's wrong, actually. So how you determine the longest chain? Uh, you should include the C double bond C. Count once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Although this is seven, compared to this, this is eight, the first way, this is eight. But this is wrong, since the carbon-carbon double bond not included in the longest chain, okay? But uh, even this is seven, but this is correct since the C double one C uh, include in the longest chain. Okay, so the longest chain chosen for the root name must include both carbon atoms of the double bond. Okay, the third, the root chain must be number from the end nearest the double bond carbon atom. That means that means the carbon double bond should have the lowest number. Okay, so you cannot give number from uh, from this, let, let's say, yeah, if I give number from this, the carbon-carbon uh, double bond has a six uh, and a seven number, and this is very large, yeah. So instead of that, yeah, I will choose wait. Okay, I will choose this as the carbon number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, once again, the carbon carbon double bond should have the lowest number. Okay, number four. The smaller of the two numbers designing, designating the carbon atoms of the double bond is used as the double bond locator. Okay, let's see what, what that means. Yeah, uh, for this, the longest chain is heptene. So I should give hep one in. Yeah have one in one here that me, that's the mean that the uh, the smaller the two numbers designating the carbon atoms of double bond is used as the double bond locator so uh this double bond uh located between the carbon number 1 and carbon number 2 right okay the the smaller the smaller one is carbon number 1 yeah so i choose number 1 to uh, as the locator of the double bond have one in Okay, 
So uh, the name for this compound will be 2-ethyl, since this is fringe, right? 2-ethyl, hep one in. Okay, this is how we give name for our kin. So once again, choose the longest chain with carbon-carbon double bond. Give number, so the carbon-carbon double bond has the smaller the smallest number. Okay, and then uh, identify uh, the longest chain by uh, give the location yeah, of the double bond, which is with carbon. Okay, let's see number five. In cycloalkene, the double bond carbons are assigned ring locations one and two. Let's say I have, let, if I have cycloalkene like this, this should be carbon number one. This should be carbon number two. Okay? Which of the two may be determined by the nearest substance in rule. So let's say now I have uh, this, one CS3. Okay, which one carbon number one? Okay, if I, if I choose this as the carbon number one, the substituent will be located at the fourth carbon, right? How if I choose this as the carbon number one? One, two, three, four, five. The substituent will be located at the fifth carbon. And that's a larger compared than this, right? So this is wrong. We should give number like this. Okay, so that means uh, number five. Number five rules. In cycloalkenes, the double bond carbons are assigning ring locations one and two, which of the two is first may be determined by the nearest substituent rule. Okay, the substituent groups containing double bonds are this phenyl group, CS2 double bond CH, or allyl group, CS2 double bond CH, CS2. Phenyl or allyl. Okay. But uh, I think for uh, as level, uh, we cannot see this uh, at the past in the past paper questions. Yeah, this is rare, very rare. Yeah, so uh, uh, don't put in your mind. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, you already understand about how to give name for alkene. So now let's see this example. Okay, try to give name for this. Okay, find the longest chain for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, miss, uh, which one I should prioritize? Is it a double bond or the alkyl group? The answer is you should prioritize the double bond, okay? So double bond should have the lowest number compared to the alkyl group. So that's why I give number from right. Okay, what branches that I have? I have these two cis, yeah? This is two. This is one cis, this is one cis. So what's the name? Alphabetical order. So for appeal. Three, five, then methyl. Longest chain, uh, seven cis. And then uh, the location of double one at the second carbon. So hep two in. This is come from heptin, but uh, you should give the location of the double one. So hep two in. Okay. This see how I give the 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 dash dash and the comma. If a uh, number with number, you should put comma. But number with uh yeah word yeah you should uh yeah. Like this, yeah. Give dash, yeah. Okay, now let's see this question. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I give number from here, two and four, yeah, right? If I give number from right, one, two, three, four. So same. This is five, this is six. 
In this case, we have two double bonds. Yeah, two double bonds. So how to give name? And the location is uh, at the carbon number two. So two, four, hexadiene. Yeah, the in. If there are three double bonds, the name will be three in. Yeah. If four, tetra in. Yeah. Once again, you should give the location. Yeah. Between the carbon number two and three, uh, put the lowest one, two, and then four. Two, four, hexadiene. Okay, how about this name? One, two, three, four, five. So the name three four dimethyl one one three pentadiene yeah five C then uh, double one at the the first and the third carbon pentadiene. Okay, the last one. Now we have three uh, double one here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can choose either direction, yeah, for numbering. Because same. Okay, look the brains. What is this? What is this? What is this? This metal, this metal, how about this? Three C's connected like this. Is it propyl? No, this is not propyl. Yeah, since propyl is like this. This is not propyl, but this is isopropyl. Don't forget the structure of iso is CS3, C8, CS3, freehand. Yeah, so this is isopropyl. This is methyl, this is methyl. So what's the name? How about M or P comes first is M, yeah? So 3,5 dimethyl, 4 isopropyl, 1, 3, 5. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I did the wrong numbering since the number should be from right. Yeah, should be from right since it is carbon number one actually. Yeah, it's okay to be wrong. Yeah, since we uh, just practice here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, still seven. So one, three, five. One, three, five. Longest chain, seven. So hep hepta three in. Yeah. Okay, I think that's about uh, Akin. We have learned about Akin, we have learned about Akin. Now we will learn about naming aromatic compounds. Aromatic compounds, that means uh, consists of benzene. Yeah, you know that benzene has a kata formula like this. Hexis carbons in hexagon. And you know that inside it, there will be a circle. Uh, this we call as benzene ring. Okay. These are some examples of uh, aromatic compounds. If uh, CS3 replace one hydrogen from the benzene, it called methyl benzene. If there are two like this, so you should put the location. So this is number one, this is number two. One, two, then methyl benzene. This one, two, three, four. So that's why it is one, four. The methyl benzene. Okay, let's practice. Okay, this name is chlorobenzene. This is bromobenzene. 
and this is iodine thing. And also is nitro, so nitro benzene. And this ethyl, ethyl benzene. Okay, plus, uh, please pause this video while you are working for this number. Okay, let's discuss the answer. Propyl benzene, you should draw the skeletal formula. Okay, one, two, three. So this is propyl benzene. Okay, and then and this is A, yeah. This is B. Benzene again. One ethyl. So let's say this is ethyl. Number four for methyl. So it would be like this. This one, two, three, four. One ethyl for methyl benzene. We'll see. One, three, five, try ethyl. One, three, five. Okay. Like virus, yeah. <laughs> one, three, five, try ethyl benzene. Okay. Oh, uh, one more. If uh, I have CS4, the name is methane, right? Methane as alkyl called as methyl. This is when C uh, CS4 lost one hydrogen to form CS3 with free hand. Okay, now let's see how we do this with benzene. This is benzene. Actually, benzene made from this. All C is so C six S six yeah. Okay, like this C six S six. So if one hydrogen lost from this compound, this will be like this. Okay. This is the free hand. Okay, this is the alkyl from benzene. The name is not benzyl. Please be careful. Methane becomes methyl. Benzene not becomes benzyl, but phenyl. Okay, phenyl. So benzene as alkyl is called as phenyl. So let's uh, say if I need to uh, give name. Uh, let's say I have uh, NS2. The name would be phenyl. This is amine. Phenyl amine, yeah, because uh, this is phenyl group, yeah, benzene uh, lost one hand, phenyl, phenyl amine. Okay, please take notes regarding this. Okay, uh, you know that uh, this uh, presentation costs of 95 slides, and this is too, too many if uh, I, I make in one video only. So I will uh, separate this into two videos. Uh, the last, uh, the, this this first video will be uh, until naming halogen alkene. So this is our last uh, our last subtopic in this video. Okay, uh, we have learned about naming alkene, alkene, and then uh, benzene, right? Now uh, we'd like to learn about the another functional group, which is halogen alkene. Don't forget, halogen alkene is Rx, yeah. So carbon connect to the halogen atom. So how to give name for a halogen alkene compound? Okay, first, the prefix for each halogen alkene name becomes fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. So uh, you should uh, state the halogens becomes uh, with O, yeah, with O suffix, yeah. So this will be bromoethin, iodopropin, yeah, one iodopropin. Okay, you use the lowest possible numbers for the associated carbon atoms as the main team. This is two chlorobutene, not three chlorobutene. Okay, this is two chloro, once again, because of Cl, should attest to the lowest kin. 
the lowest number of carbon. So you should start to give number from this. So to chloro, not three chloro. If there is more one, that one type of substituent using the prefixes bromo, chloro, etc., yeah, they are written out in alphabetical order. Yeah. So the name for this is this is the first carbon, this is the second. So B comes first before C. So one, two, dibromo. Okay, one chloro, glomosine, four, butane. Okay, understand? Okay, now let's practice. How if I have this? Um, what's the name for this? The name will be two chloro, two methyl. You then, yeah. One, two, three, four. So actually, uh, the name for halogen alkene is halogen alkene. So halogen first, and then the alkene. So chloro, the alkene is butane, yeah. To chloro, to methyl butane. Okay, let's practice one more question. What's the name for this? Let's say. Uh, Okay, please find the longest skin. Okay, the longest chain should consist the C connected to the halogen, yeah? So the longest one, I think this. Okay, longest skin. Then you can give number. This is branch. This is branch. This is the halogen, and this is branch as well. Okay, please give number from. If I start from this, yeah. Brom uh, has a uh, taste to the carbon number two. Okay, and if I start from this, yeah. Uh, I, I will make a uh, brains, methyl brains at the third carbon, yeah? So this is lower priority compared than here. So I will choose two numbering from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what's the name for this carbon? At the second carbon, I have promo, okay, and here. Let's compile first. At the third carbon, I have chloro. And at the second, third, and fourth, I have methyl. Yeah? Two, three, four. Right? Two, three, four, trimethyl. Hexane. Yeah. So two bromo, three chloro, two, three, four, trimethyl, hexane. Yeah. Why the order like this? So because B, e, C, and then M. Yeah. Alphabetical order. Okay, understand? That's about how you know. Okay, now please keep name for this. Okay, this is iodopropane. And uh, this is the carbon number one, so one iodopropane, yeah? This two, three, dibromo, butane. This should be number one, two, three, four, five. One fluoro. Two methyl, pan, two in. Yeah. Okay, this is what I mean that we have two functional group here the alkene and the halogen alkene. Yeah. You can uh, actually uh, use this as the 
long as can as well. But CS2F will become the brains, and there will be no name for this. So that's wrong, yeah. So that's why uh, I choose I choose this as the longest chain. Okay, one poro to methyl, pan to in. The F comes first because B for M. Okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, for I mean for this video. Uh, so uh, we already learned about uh, some formulas for already compounds, which is uh, empirical, molecular, uh, skeletal, structural formula. Uh, yeah, you have learned about that. And naming organic compounds, identify functional groups. There are 13 functional groups. Uh, and we already learned one by one from alkin, alkin, uh, aromatic compounds, and halogen alkene. We still have uh, many functional groups. That should be covered. So see you again uh, in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.